Hello everybody, it's Tim again. I recently just got done watching Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Um, this is a direct sequel to the second film. Uh, if you want to, you can just watch 1 and 2 and skip 3 <laughs> and just go straight to this one. Um, this is a really good movie. I was actually surprised at how good this movie was. I remember liking it, but now that I've watched it after so long, I just this is my second favorite. I like this one better than the second film. But I will say that this film had it a little bit easier than the second film because of uh, for the second film, they had to come up with a sequel idea. And this movie's pretty much kind of like a do-over of the first one almost story-wise. It hits a lot of the same beats. But it's more like a soft reboot, actually. So they can like it seems like they're wanting to do like a redo of the first movie, kind of like in a, in a but in a slightly new way. So they can like launch a bunch of new films with these new characters, which I'm fine with. Uh Jamie Lee Curtis's character gets wrote out where she's uh, supposedly died in a car crash, I believe. Um Jumping right to the movie, Donald Pleasance is back. Uh, he's playing Dr. Loomis again, obviously. Uh, somehow he survived the massive explosion at the end of the second one. There's no fucking way he would live through that, but it's a movie. So other than that, uh, the story is really good, and the rest of the movie makes up for stuff like that, and then I'm fine with that. And Michael Myers surviving, no way he would have made it either, but I would believe he would make it before Dr. Loomis because at least he's superhuman. But Dr. Loomis, I guess, is superhuman too because he survives every one of these fucking movies. So... I guess they're both immortal. But anyway, and the funny thing is, is the Hump Pleasance character only has like a little burn mark on his on his hand, and he just has like a little burn mark on his uh, like side of his face. And I'm like, okay, really? But but whatever. He does great. His speeches he gives again about Michael Myers being pure evil and stuff like that. Everybody are a little bit stale in this movie, and it's kind of like been there, done that shit. It's kind of got a little bit old, but uh, they still hold up pretty decently. But yeah, this is uh, I'd give this film three and a half stars out of possible four. This is my second favorite of the films so far. Uh, two, of course, now dropping down to my third favorite, and third film taking the number four spot. But um, Danielle Harris is in this film. She's also in Halloween 5 and the two Rob Zombie films. She's uh, She plays uh, Jamie Lloyd, uh, who was uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character's uh, daughter, and uh, she's living with uh, her adopted family. Uh, Danielle Harris, acting-wise, does fine. She does really good, I mean, for a young child actor. She does a lot better than what I thought she would. I mean, she does really good. Probably one of the best acting jobs I've seen a child actor do. Um, Donald Pleasance is great. And you got the character Rachel in the film, who is uh, uh, the step-sister. Uh, well, Jamie is her foster sister. Almost said stepsister. <laughs> Jamie is her foster sister, and Rachel like has a really... Interesting relationship with her, where Jamie feels like she doesn't love her because she's a foster sister. And but uh, the actress who plays Rachel, uh, she does a great job. Rachel is a very likable character. I really enjoy this character, the way she tries to help Jamie and saves her multiple times through the through the film, and keeps reassuring her that she she does love her and that she does care about her. And so she's very likable. Her and Jamie uh, are are a great team, <laughs> uh, character wise and acting wise. They both do fine, and they're. Uh, Probably the uh, second likable or uh, third likable in the franchise after uh, J Jamie Lee Curtis and I will end Donald Pleasance. Or well, for me it'd be Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis because I like his character better than uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character. That's just me. I don't know about other people. But um, jumping straight to the film here, it's been a uh, I believe ten years maybe after the second movie. Michael Myers' body is like in a in a prison, I think, and he's on life support, and they're wanting to transfer him to Smith's Grove, and uh, they come there to pick him up, and this security guard is, like, talking to the people that are there to pick him up, and one, one of them hears somebody, uh, well, it may not, uh, it might be a mental asylum, I'm not for sure, where they're, where they're at, because they hear somebody scream there, and, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, one of the paramedics goes, uh, the, says Jesus, and the, the, the cop that's there that's leading them through the place goes, Jesus ain't got nothing to do with this place, man. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's a little cheesy, a little silly, but uh, it's like a cliche to do that in horror movies all the time. Or it's about the same as action movies when the bad guy gets killed and he looks at you and says, see you in hell. <laughs> but whatever, that's not a big deal. Um, uh, Like I've said before, every movie has problems, even this one, which is my second favorite of this franchise thus far. Uh, the, uh, they get in there, they take Michael Myers' body, put a load it in the back of the ambulance, they're driving out of there. Uh, Michael Myers overhears that he has a niece. <laughs> and, uh, I guess apparently he's been, like, uh, in a coma this entire time for ten years. And only becomes activated when he finds out he has another family member. 
So he's kind of like a robot with an on and off switch a little bit. Only activates again on uh, Halloween, I suppose. Um, but he comes, to, he comes to life all at once. Grabs the one of the guy grabs the guy there in the vehicle in the ambulance and fucking bashes his head and rams his thumb into the dude's head. Uh, pretty graphic, but a, a cool scene. Uh. <laughs> And then, for some reason, Jamie in the movie has, like, a psychic connection with Michael, even though she's, she doesn't even know what it looks like. She's never seen him, but she has nightmares of him, and she has visions of him. Uh, I'm not really sure why she has the connection with him like that. I guess because we're supposed to believe she suffers from the same, either she's, either her character is supposed to suffer from the same uh, uh, psychoticness as Michael Myers does, or um, or they just have, like, some kind of spiritual kinship connection because of their family. I'm not for sure because Jamie Lee Curtis's character didn't have that, and she didn't have anything like psychotic in her. And if it's supposed to be like the psychoticness runs to the family, um, I don't really think that's possible in real life. But I know this is a movie, but still, I'm like, it doesn't really explain it good enough. But uh, anyway, she has dreams and stuff of him, and they're interesting. She has nightmares about him. She gets freaked out, and the he, he grabs her from underneath the bed and nightmare, and it's pretty entertaining. The fucking parents run in there, they uh, <laughs> reassure her everything's okay, and she's crying. The actress, Daniel Harris, does a great job, like I said. Uh, the parents are in there with her. Um, they reassure her everything's okay. It's next morning. Um, Michael Myers is, uh, oh, uh, this is the next morning. Donald, uh, Donald Pleasance finds out Michael Myers' body has disappeared, so he goes looking for him, obviously. <laughs> He heads out to find Michael Myers, which might as well be his only friend, <laughs> really, because he's the only person he ever talks about all the time. So he goes to find Michael Myers. We get a scene where Michael Myers kills a mechanic by stabbing him in the gut. Uh, and he steals his clothes because Michael Myers is fucking wrapped up in bandages and shit where he was burned all the hell at the end of the second one. Uh, Loomis makes it to a uh, restaurant uh, or a diner, and uh, Michael Myers has killed every single person there. And... Uh, uh, Loomis sees Michael Myers and he's like, "You want another victim, Michael? Just take me. Leave the people of Hattonfield alone." <laughs> of course, Michael Myers just doesn't even say anything, but he's probably thinking eat shit. And uh, Loomis flies off, starts shooting at him. Then Michael Myers disappears, and you get the music. Da 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 da. <laughs> I can't do the Halloween tune, but it's terrific again. The score is great. Uh, Michael disappears. Uh, Loomis goes outside, and you get an action scene here. That's once again more action than anything in the first movie, and pretty much the second movie too, almost. All together, the second movie. Um, but um, uh, he goes outside. And Michael what, fucking we start driving around in a truck, I believe, and the, uh, he causes the the gas pumps to blow up. They blow up, big explosion. Fucking uh, Loomis jumps uh, jumps out of the way, leaps out of the way in a big action stylized moment. It's like no Donald Pleasance. <laughs> He's like trying to shoot at Michael Myers while Michael Myers is driving away in his truck. It's like, damn, Loomis is an action star. But anyway, it's entertaining, it's fun. Michael Myers gets away. Of course, he's heading to Hattonfield. Uh, you get some stuff where Jamie's being bullied at school and they're making fun of her. Um, similar to the way Tommy Doyle was treated in the first movie. Um, but uh, she gets out, uh, she leaves school. Uh, Rachel picks her up. She's riding around, and fucking Lindsay Wallace, of all characters, is driving them around, now older. Uh, but uh, they go to this uh, discount mart uh, so they can buy a Halloween costume for Halloween. She picks out a clown costume, just like reminiscent of Michael Myers, which I liked. Great callback. Uh, shows that she uh, definitely has a connection to him, but I'm still not sure if they developed it good enough to where I get it totally. But uh, it's still developed decent. But they kind of forget about this uh, psychic connection and everything uh, for the second and most of the third act. But, um, and even after a little bit after the first act, she's in there and she's like look, trying the outfit on in front of a mirror and she like re sees ref uh, reflections of the little Michael Myers where he'd kill, uh, he'd blood on his clown outfit when he'd killed his sister. So, and Michael Myers actually shows up there and gets a new mask. And uh, she gets freaked out and uh, Rachel comes back there and she's got a boyfriend named Brady. Who's mad because she won't come over and give him none tonight because she has to babysit her uh, foster sister. So, um, they kind of, Rachel comes back there and Jamie's okay. Michael Myers has disappeared, but he's got a new mask. Uh, they're out trigger treating. Um, Rachel goes to, um, goes to a particular house who where the sheriff's daughter lives. 
and she finds Brady there fucking the sheriff's daughter. <laughs> So all you, uh, he does die in the movie, so all you women are probably, uh, well, a lot of women are probably going to be glad that he dies because women don't like cheating men, obviously, and, well, he shouldn't be cheating out of the way. Uh, I mean, he shouldn't be cheating, so I really don't like it either, but I'm just saying that I'd say women are probably rooting for him to get killed <laughs> because uh, women especially probably don't want to like a guy who fucks around <laughs> with another woman, and I don't blame him. But anyway, he's fucking the sheriff's daughter. Uh, sheriff's daughter has huge knockers, which are pretty entertaining to see, and you don't get to see you don't get to see enough of them, <laughs> which is kind of sad. <laughs> but um, so uh, Brady comes out there, he's like blabbing, trying to come up with some bullshit excuse about why he's fucking around. Uh, Rachel basically tells him to eat shit, heads out there looking for Jamie, who she's lost track of now. Uh, Michael's uh following him, uh, basically stalking her. Um. Meanwhile, Donald Pleasant's character is like trying to get a ride. Well, earlier in the film, he's trying to get a ride to Hattonfield, and you get a funny ass scene where these cheerleaders and these two guys are like in the vehicle, and they're like, "Come on, old man, get a ride." He comes up to him, and they just fly off and blow dust in his face. I thought it was funny. I've seen stuff like that before in other movies, but seeing it happen to Donald Pleasant is pretty hilarious. He gets a ride with a preacher, which is a uh, pretty entertaining. Uh, preacher's like talking about how uh, he's searching for damnation or the beast or something like that. And Donald Pleasance is like, me too. It's pretty pretty interesting dialogue. Uh, Donald Pleasance gets to Hattonfield. Um, he's there talking to the new sheriff, Ben Meeker. I don't know this actor's name who plays the character, but he does find the new sheriff, the actor. I mean, the actor and character is fine. Uh, but uh, Donald Pleasance, that's why I said the film feels like a soft redo or a new redo of the first film. Because he's like telling the sheriff all over again. He's evil. He's pure evil. And he's in the town. We gotta do something. So it's like hitting a little bit too close to the steps of the first movie or the same beats. But uh, different enough to where it, it still works. So the sheriff decides to help him. Um, <coughs> and all the phone lines are out. So uh, the sheriff goes around with uh, Donald Pleasance trying to look around for Michael Myers. Uh, they come back to the station eventually, and the whole fucking station has been ripped apart. Sheriff Station has, and all the police in it are dead. Michael Myers is fucking went to town. You see the aftermath, like some dude's fucking arm ripped off. And it's like, shit. <laughs> uh, you guys seen the movie where Michael Myers knocks out all the power to the fucking town? Where uh, he goes up to the power plant, and um, there's, a, there's a worker there. He's like... <laughs> The worker says something to him like, "Just cut that Halloween. You don't, no, don't try that Halloween shit with me, man." <laughs> Michael Myers fucking grabs him, throws him on top of the power generator, and it fucking fries him and causes the power to cut off to the whole town. It's a pretty entertaining scene. Um, so basically after that, they uh, the sheriff and Donald Pleasance try to try to find uh, Jamie and fucking um, Rachel so they can take him in and keep him safe. Uh, they go to the Jamie's house and they find that Jamie's dog there dead where Michael Myers has killed it. It looked like he strangled it with a phone cord or something. I'm like, okay, Michael Myers' dog fetish for killing dogs has gotten a little silly if he's strangling them with fucking phone cords. But uh, it's, it's still mildly entertaining. Once again, hitting the steps of the original where he killed a dog and that one as well. But um, they finally managed to find Well, Rachel finds uh, Jamie and then, uh, and then they're found by the sheriff, Ben Meeker. Is the character's name, and so Ben and uh, uh, Doctor Loomis find him and put uh, put him in the car, take him to safety, and all once see all these multiple Michael Myers pop out, everybody dressed up Michael Myers outfits, and uh, the sheriff gets ready to shoot one of them, and it fucking turns out it's just a big prank, which we, we which obviously like, if you're watching this you know it's a prank, but it's still fucking funny, because Doctor Loomis is like freaking out, because there's so many there's like four or five Michael Myers. Pretty, still pretty funny. So they get in the after they find out it's a prank, they get in the car, go take him to safety. They go to sheriff's house. Uh, he has one deputy uh, who hasn't been killed, and you get to see a scene where Michael Myers is fucking like crouched down in the back of the seat, the back seat of the police car. So once again, you get like him hiding in the shadows and stuff like that. Um, and uh, he basically hitches a ride to the sheriff's house. He's there. Sheriff's daughter's there. Um, Brady's there, obviously, because he's fucking her. Um, so they're all there, they all board the place up, and of course Michael Myers arrived with the deputy, so he's made it into the place already. Uh, Ben, um, uh, the sheriff tries to get a hold of the state police so he can get them all there to back him up. They say they're on their way, but they take fucking forever. Um, 
So they have to wait it out there until the state police get there. But there's a vigilante mob of rednecks who are going around looking for Michael Myers because uh, they don't want a repeat of the last Halloween where he killed multiple teenagers. So they're going around looking for Michael Myers, accidentally killed a wrong, uh, a wrong guy uh, because, well, <laughs> they're fuck-ups. <laughs> They thought they, one of them thought they saw Michael Myers, but it turned out it was just some, some guy hiding behind a bush. <laughs> so Ben finds out about it. He decides to leave and go uh, sort the shit out and get the rednecks to stop, I guess, or try to stop them in some way. Meanwhile, there at the house, Michael Myers is in the house. He kills the deputy off camera. Um, the uh, sheriff's daughter uh, finds the deputy's body fucking all mangled up looking. He takes a shotgun. Michael Myers has a shotgun in his hand. Instead of shooting her, he fucking rams it through her and rams her through the wall. And I'm, it's an entertaining scene. It's fine. But I'm like, why don't you just fucking shoot her? But whatever. <laughs> uh, still entertaining. Uh, so it's Brady, Jamie, and uh, Rachel. Like I said, they don't play up like the connection Jamie has to Michael enough for me to get like enough information out of it. They dropped it completely by now. And I've kind of forgot about it, really. But, um... So, uh, it's those three, and they're going to try to make it out of the house. They see, uh, well, Rachel finds the two dead bodies of the deputy and the sheriff's daughter. So she wants to get the fuck out of there. So, her and Brady find Jamie, and they're trying to get out of there. And Michael Myers shows up, starts coming. Brady decides to go out like a man and uh, hold him off long enough for those two to make it out the window. Um, so, he tries to hold Michael Myers off. He shoots one. Uh, well, he tries to load up his he tries to load up his gun, but he doesn't get it loaded in time before Michael Myers gets up there. Well, he gets it loaded and then he fucking misses. Michael Myers grabs the gun, knocks him backwards. Uh, he uh, Brady hits him like two times, and then Michael Myers grabs him on the throat, and I think he he lifts him up like one of the throat and like right here on the face. And I think he crushes his throat and crushes his face a little bit, and that kills him. I think or crushes his skull maybe a little bit. Or I don't even know exactly what it was. It's a really it really happens really quick. It's not overly gory or anything, but you don't know. Uh, you don't really. Uh, I don't think you can really tell what exactly it was. I guess he crushes his the uh, neck, maybe snaps his neck. And that's what kills him. But uh, either way, it's entertaining. <laughs> so Brady's dead. Uh, Michael Myers is chasing after uh, Rachel and Jamie. Uh, they make it to the roof. Michael, you get a scene where Michael Myers is on the roof and he kind of like just. Flops his leg over to the other side, and he's like laying down flat. It looks kind of goofy. You've seen Michael Myers do that, but it, it's it's a uh, it doesn't kill the movie or anything, but it's kind of silly. So Michael Myers makes it over there. He's coming after him. Uh, Rachel's trying to figure out how to get Jamie out of there, and she tried puts a cord around her so she can she can lower her down to the ground so she can get out of there. Michael Myers comes, swings at her. She rolls out of the way, falls off the roof, lands on the ground. Pretty entertaining action scene. Uh. Uh, Jamie falls from a, a cord, or the cord breaks one, I'm not for sure, uh, and she lands on the ground, tries to wake up Rachel, Rachel won't wake up, so she takes off when she sees Michael Myers coming after, and now that he's made it off the roof too, she takes off out of there, she starts uh, getting the fuck out of Dodge, uh, she runs into Donald Pleasance, uh, oh, uh, yeah, Donald Pleasance was at the house with him, with, the, with Ben, but he left to go look for Michael Myers, so, but anyway, back to what we're talking about now. Uh, back to what I'm talking about now. I mean, she fucking runs into Donald Pleasance. Donald Pleasance is there. He wants to try to help her. He takes her to the school. Uh, Michael Myers shows up at the school, and uh, he fucking slings Donald Pleasance all the way through a door. And Donald Pleasance is like he's like 60, but he still survives. <laughs> so it's like I'm telling you, the motherfucker's immortal. <laughs> so he's uh, but he gets slung through the door. You know, Michael Myers surprises him, slings Donald Pleasance through a door. Um, uh, takes off after Jamie. Jamie falls down the stairs. Uh, he gets ready to stab her. You really think that he might actually kill her? They put this, they put this little girl in some fucking jeopardy in this movie. He gets ready to stab her. Uh, Rachel shows up, shoots him in the face with a fire extinguisher, blinds him for a little bit. Her and Jamie manage to make it out of the school. The redneck mob show up there because the school alarm is going off. <coughs> they decide, well, we'll fuck Michael Myers. We'll just get out of here and let the state police have him because they're finally arriving. So they head out of there. Michael Myers somehow teleports from the school to underneath the truck that they're driving in. It's kind of like a what the fuck moment. Because <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he managed to make it underneath the truck like that. But it's not too big a deal. Uh, you get a scene where Michael Myers climbs up from the bottom of the truck to the back of the truck. Fucking wipes out three people at the same time. 
and uh, kind of a neat little action scene. He throws one guy off, and then the other guy, he, like, stabs him, like, swings and stabs him, like, in the side. Uh, the dude's, like, swinging at him. Michael Myers dodges it and fucking stabs him in the side. So it's like, Michael Myers, no jujitsu. <laughs> but anyway, it's an entertaining scene. And then uh, he throws the other guy off the truck as well. There's three of them in the back. And then the last guy who's driving, he fucking rams his uh, hand through the side window and rips it and his entire throat out, like, grabs it and rips the whole thing up like that and the blood coming out and, like, gory. Like, it's a real gory kill, more like a Friday the 13th kill. Once again, they're trying to compete with the 80s slashers out at the time, like, probably Friday the 13th, and by now, I'd say maybe a Nightmare on Elm Street. But, uh, so, uh, he's dead. Uh, Rachel has to toss him out of the vehicle so she can drive, take over driving. She takes over driving, and Michael Myers falls on the front of the truck. She slings him off, and then she hits him with the truck, knocks him backwards, into a, into what, uh, right in front of a mine shaft, I believe, so he's laying there, uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie and Rachel get out of the vehicle, uh, the state police are coming over there, and along with, uh, Ben, um, and, uh, Jamie goes over there to touch Michael Myers' hand to check on him, because she's got, she kind of feels sorry for him, I believe, it seems like it, because he's still her uncle, she's got, like, a connection with him, still kind of not explained, and when she touches his, uh, he touches his wrist, it's kind of like a, like a transference of evil, I think, like from him to her. Now she's got his sickness. Somehow his evil, I think, supposed. To, I think we're supposed to think it transfers from him to her right here. She touches his hand, but I'm still kind of thinking, like, what the fuck? How'd that happen? But uh, whatever. <laughs> it's not too big a deal because the next scene we get is pretty badass. Uh, Rock Myers raises back up. Jamie gets out of the way, and uh, Ben, along with the whole fucking state police and the. Uh, uh, mow his ass down with shotguns and everything and blow the fuck out of him. Pretty entertaining uh, kill scene for Michael Myers. They blow the entire shit out of him and he falls backwards down the mine hole. It's like, damn. It's just as much uh, fun as the kill from part to his death from part two. Not as poetic with Dr. Loomis blowing up with him and everything, but still pretty fucking intense. Um, but yeah, after that, uh, Dr. Loomis and uh, Ben are with, uh, Rachel and uh, Jamie back at their house, and uh, Jamie's foster parents are there, and her foster mother is going to give her a bath. She still got Jamie still got her clown costume on, and you see like a point of view POV like the original movie, which is really cool. And then uh, she fucking stabs her stepmom uh, with a pirate scissors, and then uh, uh, Loomis here's a here's her scream, here's the stepmom scream. I mean the foster mom, not stepmom. I get step and foster confused sometimes for some reason. But, um, Loomis hears the foster mom screaming, he, uh, scream, he comes over there, and the uh, Jamie's standing there all bloody with a pair of scissors in her hands, and fucking, he gets ready to blow her away with a gun, <laughs> and, uh, the sheriff stops him, and Rachel comes over there, and the foster dad comes over there, and, uh, gets some good acting by Donald Pleasance here, which is kind of, kind of fun, watching him go like this, he's, he's going, no, 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 <laughs> it's pretty fucking funny, but at the same time, it's, he does real good acting-wise playing it. That he's like horrified at an, another fucking new Michael Myers, basically now, which is an interesting idea that a new character or family member related character would um would have the same incident like this. But at the same time, I'm thinking I got I would give it four stars, but at the but at the same time I can't I can't feel like I can because I'm thinking why does she snap like this? Where are we supposed to get the idea that she has the same mental problems as Michael Myers does or did? But we're never really sure what mental problems Michael Myers had, if any. Um, so I'm left with the question of, does she, does she just have a psychic connection to him? And if she did, or if she does, was it like an evil transference? If, if so, if how? <laughs> so I have to give it three and a half. But at the same time, this is still an epic ending and really cool way to end this. Once again, you can end the films here. This is another film that you can end this series with. You could have ended it at part two. This film is better than the second one because it's just a, an amped up redo of the first movie with more action and a different enough, slightly different enough story to where it doesn't feel like a retread. Uh, but it, hits, it still hits like a one or two of the same beats. But it's different enough to where it's still really cool and the best sequel after the and the best movie after the first one so far. But uh. Yeah, you still could have stopped at the second one. You still didn't need this movie, but the fact that you have it, you should. This franchise could stop here once again. Could easily stop here, or could do a sequel with Jamie being psychotic, or uh, 
something interesting with her being crazy and becoming a killer. But um, I don't think people just don't want that. They don't. So it's interesting that they would be ballsy to try to seem like they're going to go in this direction with the franchise. But at the same time, uh, I don't, they're not going to because I know in part five Michael Myers comes back. So at the same time, it kind of seems useless this ending does. But uh, it's still a really cool and epic ending and you know, a way to end the Michael Myers character but keep the legacy living on. You could end this franchise right here. But no, they kept making them with Michael Myers back as the killer. They pussied out on their own ending they tried to do here. So it's like, what the fuck? Who even gives a shit then about this ending if it doesn't even end up meaning anything? So, <laughs> but whatever. It's still a really cool ending. And you can end the franchise right here. Once again, you can end it right here. It's not as poetic an ending as part uh, as part two, but it's still uh, a very epic ending and a great way to end the uh, Michael Myers saga, but continue his legacy in the form of his niece. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is a really good film. This is the uh, second best film after the first one so far that I've seen. I really enjoyed it. It actually makes me look forward to part five a little bit, even though I remember it. I remembered it sucking, but maybe it'll surprise me. It's been a really long time since I've seen it, but I really like this one. This is a really good movie. I definitely recommend you see it. Uh, I'd say watch one, watch two, uh, end it there. If you just if you're only a fan of the um, Laurie and uh, Loomis and fucking Michael story, if you're only a fan of that uh, trio story, end it there at the second one. Uh, but if you want to see more, uh, if you're a, uh, you want to see more Michael Myers and uh, a really good story. It hits some of the same beats of the original, but it's fresh and different enough to carry on the, this franchise. But even though it should end here. <laughs> but um, then I would say watch this movie because you won't be disappointed. This is a really good installment in this franchise. Um, and I know the second one, I mean the fifth one, the next one only, come, only came out like a year after this one, I think. So that t I believe it was a year after this one, which makes me think really fucking rushed and... Kind of like they rushed Dream Child right after Dream Master. So, uh, in a way, I'm looking forward to number five, but at the same time, I'm not. So, I'll see you guys again with that review. And uh, it makes me feel good to say that <coughs> that this film is fucking miles better than part three. <laughs> and I definitely recommend it to Michael Myers fans and horror movie fans in general. So, I'll see you guys again with a review for Halloween 5. And once again, hope all you guys have a happy Halloween.